were trying to work out, is there such a thing as an information security model? Um, if there is one, is it changing? Uh, does it really exist? Um, is it evolving in, in response to today's threats and, and the sort of the cyber angle that we keep hearing about um, from all sources? And one of the things that we dug into is the fact that this new, some people would argue sexy word of cyber is, is crept in. Uh, for many years, we've had different words. I've been in business for a long time. We start off with automated data processing security, information technology security, information security, information insurance, cyber security. So we're relatively confident in a couple of years' time, another one will be along where people will try and define the terms because there is a vested interest in some bodies uh, in actually continually reinventing things. The other thing that really came out quite nicely was that um, we as a profession actually do things quite well. We, we may not have a, a model that's carved out in stone. Uh, people talk about people, process and technology, for example. We, we talk about um, you know, the, the idea of uh, prevention, detection and reaction. But these models work. They may not be the, the, the be all and end all, but they actually help us in our organisation do things well today. They will have to change for the future because the threat is changing, our businesses are changing. Um, but they provide us with a good way of getting our grip on things. And I think what we've actually got there is, you said what's good for today um, is, harkens back to a quote from Henry Ford on standards, where he said, standards are the best you know today, but which can be improved tomorrow. Uh, and we did dig into some detail as to the degree in which standards help. Uh, and for most of the community in the room, uh, there was a strong feeling that ISO IEC uh, through subcommittee 27 producing standards like 27001 was a very important thing that of course is something that from a UK perspective we can be rather proud of because the whole 27000 series came from an old British standard produced in the mid 1990s called British Standard 7799 but these things do need to keep evolving yeah they do and I think the other thing of course is that um, what was good today may not be good enough tomorrow and we but we also have to not just run off after the latest buzzword, the latest thing, um, and change our entire approach. You know, just because someone calls it cyber or something, it may actually mean that the, the actual devil in the detail is very similar to what we're doing with today, just that it's being branded differently. So, yes, use the frameworks, yes, use the standards, evolve them, but keep in mind that doing the basics well is often the, the, the foundation for success in, in our industry. And that's very much what's happened if we look at uh, to 27001, 27002, the, the legacy of the old British Standard 7799. Uh, if you count the number of controls, the, the things that we recommend people do, uh, they were at 133 when we went from BS 7799 to ISO 17799 12 years ago, and we're now up to 134. So despite 12 years of technological process, we've actually only yet really needed to one more, more fundamental concept. So it does suggest that the pr basic principles that we're laying down in sort of Pareto approach to keeping things uh, protected is broadly correct. And the other thing that came out as well was not only the, the whole standards piece and how you can help your organization you know, react and, and uh, look, forward, look forward to, to dealing with uh, threats, et cetera, was, skills and, and how we can train people going forwards and how universities and, and organizations have a role to play you know teaching people about standards business people about why we have to have information security standards but also teaching the the next generation to come forward they're ready they understand what a standard does how to use it and so therefore they can integrate better into the workplace and the workforce from a security perspective much better I think one of the things that we stressed was that the, it's not just people who claim they do security who need to care about it. I say my day job is running something called the Trustworthy Software Initiative for the UK, which is a public-private partnership charged with, quotes making software better. And what we need to do is actually make sure that we don't have people graduating in engineering or computer science who have literally never heard security mentioned to them, which can happen at the moment. Uh, we're hoping, in concert with the British Computer Society and the Institute of Engineering Technology, to make a mandatory minimum of one hour's instruction in this topic within the next couple of years.